birds and pictures. Ah, yes, there we are in the pet shop with George and Charles the macaw. <laughs> Hello. Meow. Nutmeg's put photos of some of our friends into her photo albums. Meow. Well, there's Ita, whose party we went to, with Nutmeg trying to cheat at part of the parcel. Meow. Oh, and there's Tiger that Nutmeg Meow. met at the zoo. And one of the baby gorillas that I made friends with. We had a good day out at the zoo, didn't we, Nutmeg? Meow. Let's see who else is here. Ah, that's Anna. Now, she's the artist who painted Nutmeg's picture. You enjoyed that, didn't you, Nutmeg? Meow. Meow. <laughs> well, Nutmeg and I have got lots of different friends. I expect you have too. Well, we went along to talk to some children about their friends. We've been making books about some of our friends. Meow. Right, who's going to go first then? Right, uh, James. Now, what have you got in your book? Belgium. Belgium? Have you been to Belgium? Yeah. How did you get there? Because it's a different country, isn't it? By ferry. On a ferry across the sea? Yeah. How long did it take? Four hours. Meow! Did you feel sick on the ferry? My mum did. Your mum did? Oh, yeah. poor mum. So who did you go and visit? Brown and Rob. Have you got photos of them? Yes. Let's have a look. My friend's Bram and Rob. Now, who's in the photo? That's Bram, that's Rob, that's me, and that's my sister Penny. Penny? Yep. Meow. So did you go anywhere special while you were in Belgium? Yes, we went to a museum and we went to Bram and Rob's school. Did you like the school? Yes. That is their school and that's Bram's class. Thanks, James. Right, who's next then? Right, Christopher, who's your special friend? Jonathan. And why do you like him? Because he plays chess. Jonathan plays chess with me. Meow. Chess isn't an easy game to play. It takes time to learn how all the different pieces move. So it helps if you have a friend who can teach you. One of the most tricky pieces to move is the knight. So how it goes, it goes two pieces forward. One, two, and then it goes one to the side. Like that. Now, who normally wins when you play chess with Jonathan? Jonathan. So how long have you been playing chess? Not very long. So what's your favourite piece on the chessboard? The Queen. The Queen? Why? Because she can move any step she likes and any direction. Well, the Queen's quite an important piece then, isn't it? Yeah. All right, Lorraine, your special friend is Corin, isn't it? Yes. Have you got a picture in your book? Why is she your special friend? Because we play chase in the playground. Now, who can run the faster? Corin. So, how do you have to get out of the way? I have to go round and round in circles so she gets dizzy. Does <laughs> she? It's a good way of keeping warm, isn't it? Yes. Come on, Corin! Come on, please! Come on, it! Well done, Lorraine. Right, Beth. And who are your special friends? Alice and Rascal. Alice and Rascal, have you got pictures of them? Meow. Meow. Hang on, those aren't people. They're rats. Yeah. Rats? Why do you like rats? Because they're cuddly. Which one's which? Alice is brown and white and Rascal is plain white. Meow. So where do they live? In the cage in our classroom. Do you help clean them out? Yes. When you have animals as friends, you have to learn how to look after them too. After you've held the rats, you have to wash your hands. How about that, Nutmeg? Alice, come to see Nutmeg. I don't know if Nutmeg had ever seen a rat before. And Nutmeg became quite friendly with that rat, didn't you, Nutmeg? Oh no, she's on the phone again. Nutmeg is always on the phone to her friends. <laughs> I just hope this one doesn't live on the moon. I'm not even sure if it's a real friend or just someone that she's made up. <laughs> There's a boy called Oscar in this story who has a friend called Billy. 
but everyone thinks he's made up. This is Oscar. And this is Oscar's friend, Billy. Oscar's mum and dad think Oscar made Billy up. Whenever Oscar talked about Billy, his mum and dad said, don't be silly. But Oscar and Billy were the best of friends, day and night. Sometimes Oscar let Billy have some of his dinner, but then had to eat it all himself. When Billy left little bits of mud around the house, Oscar got the blame. When Billy dressed the dog in Dad's things, Oscar got the blame. When Billy put frogs in Granny's slippers, Oscar got the blame. When Billy made breakfast, Oscar got the blame. When Billy washed the cat, Oscar got the blame. And when Billy left the bathroom taps running, Oscar got the blame and was sent to bed without a story. It's not fair, said Oscar. Nobody believes in my friend Billy. They never do, said Billy. Billy did do some naughty things, didn't he? Meow. Maybe it was really Oscar that did them. Meow. What about washing the cat? You think you'd like that nutmeg? Meow. <laughs> no, I didn't think you would. And he wasn't very friendly to the frogs either, was he? Putting them in Granny's slippers. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> here's another frog that looks like he needs a friend. Frightened frog. Frightened frog. frog. Those words start with the same letters. Here's how Magic Pencil writes them. Round and down, then across. Down, up and over. Round and down, then across. Down, up and over. Round and down, then across. Down, up and over. There's some more friendly frogs in this story. It's called Frog's Holiday. Yeah. There is a quiet, peaceful pond near here. But for the frogs who live in the pond, it is neither quiet nor peaceful. There are too many big fish and too many small boys. We need to get away from this pond. We want a holiday. Ribbit, ribbit, said the frogs one morning. Ribbit, ribbit, rah, rah, rah. So, taking some fly and spider sandwiches and flasks of pond water, they hopped up the hill and along the street in search of the perfect place for a frog's holiday. 
They looked in the pet shop. But that had too many big fish. They looked in the swimming pool. That had too many small boys. Then they came to a place that was warm and damp. There were no big fish and no small boys. It was Mrs. Crumple's laundrette. The frogs had found the perfect place for their perfect holiday. They waited until the last customer went home and Mrs. Crumple locked up the shop and went upstairs. Then they had lots of fun. Mrs. Crumple came back downstairs with a large bag of her own washing. What's going on? cried Mrs. Crumple. Out by morning! But we want a holiday! wailed all the frogs. I need a holiday! said Mrs. Crumple. Then off you go! said the frogs. And we'll mind the shop and the baby as well. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. So the next day, the frogs washed the towels for the hairdresser, folded sheets, and made sure that people behaved properly in Mrs. Crumple's laundrette. They also kept the baby fed and cheerful and clean. At the end of the day, they were tired but happy. Mrs. Crumple went to the quiet, peaceful pond with her fishing gear. She had a nice long sit down and a cup of tea and some jam sandwiches. Then, feeling much refreshed, she caught a big fish and chased lots of small boys. At the end of the day, she was tired but happy. She thanked the frogs for her day off. She went into her little back room and made the frogs some fish paste sandwiches and opened a packet of squashed fly biscuits. Next morning, the frogs said goodbye to Mrs. Crumple and thanked her for their wonderfully quiet holiday. They went back along the street and down the hill to the pond where life is always too exciting. And whenever the frogs want a holiday, they go back to Mrs. Crumple's laundrette and give her a day off. It is the most perfect place for a frog's holiday. Ribbit, 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 ribbit